Hello and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Martha Booker Johnson and I am the host for today's talk. If you are participating in the live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat module of the Zoom application at any time during the presentation or ask a voice question by raising your hand once the presentation is complete. Today's speaker is Amani Lucekelo. Amani is, a, is an associate professor in the Department of Languages and Literature at the University of Dar es Salaam. His research interests include the morphology and syntax of Kiswahili, language use in rural Tanzania, language contact in Africa, morphosyntax of argument structure in Bantu languages, the syntax of the noun phrase in Bantu, linguistic landscape in Africa, anthropological linguistics of non-Bantu languages of Tanzania, grammaticalization in Bantu languages, the language and education in Africa, and the morphology of Kiswahili. Please join me in welcoming Amani as he gives his talk, the Akie Society of Tanzania, linguistic facts from the hunter-gatherers in between pastoral Maasai and agriculturalist Ngu. Thank you for coming to this talk. Habari what? Tupo salama. Safi. My, my motivation for doing research among the Akie Society of Tanzania, I mean, emanates from my engagement with the Hadza, who are a hunter-gatherer community, and the Akia are also a hunter-gatherer community. And I, I had, with the Hadzabe, I had worked with personal names. And for the Hadzabe, I have come to understand that personal names are getting changed as the Hadzabe who want to interact with the aerial, I'm quoting Herman Batipo now, the aerial large communities in the area. And as they move to the larger Tanzanian situation in which Kiswahili comes into play. And so they change names to fit the society in which they live. So I had in the back of my mind, I had the assumption that maybe the Akia are also doing the same. But for today, I cannot talk more about names because I don't have enough data. Then I had an, uh, another kind of knowledge about the foragers Hadzabe as regards names of crops and names of plants. And it appears that they have borrowed a number of names of plants, even though they rely on plants and animals, but they borrow names of plants. So I want to see what is happening among the, um, the hunter-gatherer at here. And they have a um, little bit smaller number of data for crop names. And with the Adzabi, I also learned ab uh, about intermarriage and how it has influence on the language uh, in question and uh, kingship terms. For the Akia, I don't have enough data for kingship terms because I have not been uh, able to compare the data from the two villages properly. Mm. For today, I will stick to crop names and names of artifacts and uh, household uh, items. But later, as you are aware now, uh, Kisling invited me to a project on Datoga. So I had to shift to the Nairo Saharan languages. And Akia is a Nairo Saharan language. The assumption I had in my mind is that um, as regards kingship terms, um, the Datoga people of uh, Tabora and northern parts have borrowed some kingship terms from Bantu. So the assumption is do, the assumption I have is that do the Akio also borrow kingship terms from the um, Maasai, Ongu, or Zigua? Mm -hmm. That is the target I'm going to. And again, Kisling and I had a uh, well, station sessions for the weather terms in 
in Datoga. And we developed a, a, a draft for that. I want to see what is happening among the Akia as far as weather terms is concerned. Those are the, some of the motivations which pushed me to deal with the Hatsa. Sorry, with the Akia, which is a Nelo Saharan uh, hunter gatherer community. Krista Konig, Cassin Regel, and Bent Heine had spent some time. My informants are saying uh, Cassin Regel was in Ngababa, while uh, Bent Heine and uh, Krista Konig were in Gitu. They uh, spent some time there and they have gathered enough information. And for today, the Aki community is uh, far, far smaller, very small as compared to the Hadza. The Aki cannot reach 300 as uh, 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 Krista Koenig and colleagues are proposing. And that number might be, the 300 might also be larger than the number which is available in the field. For example, for the village of Gitu, where I had been this year, their population is less than 46 mentioned in the book. And I were able to identify only six of the households for the Akia, which is indeed a very small number. And such a small number is likely to be absorbed in the neighboring communities. And since that is possible, I'm, I want to see how much they have um, uh, borrowed from the neighboring communities. So the literature that I'm feeding into for the Akia society, which is a little bit smaller as compared to the Hadza, uh, begins with Maguire, Maguire or Maguire, who did research uh, and produced two articles in 1928 about the culture of the Aki people as related to the Okiek of Kenya. And he, he was based at Kijungu, which is until today still a uh, base for the uh, Aki society of Ngababa and Kijungu is the center or the word center for Tanzania, Makao Yakata. Uh, and then later it was Mkare Buire, who also had introduced anthro uh, anthropological uh, uh, study for the Aki. And um, when I was talking with the Aki today, they are saying he, he stayed in Kijungu and Gitu. So he traversed the Aki speaking uh, uh, villages and forage land in the area. And then Bakken also produced a thesis and Florian produced another thesis on the Aki society. These are the anthropologists who had introduced Aki to the research group now uh, having worked with the Hadza, the Hadza have mm, many researchers going into Hadza land in Mongolia or, or Yadachin. And the Aki have not been researched much except now the documentation project by Krista Koenig and Kassin Regel and Ben Rahain who had collected enough materials to uh, restore the culture of the, uh, uh, to store and document the culture of the um, Aki people. But there are lines that I want to correct. Uh, one of which is it's not to correct as such. There are lines that I think they require more feeding. And one of which is the input uh, or the influence of the neighboring communities. The Masa on the one hand, the Aki on the other hand, or on sorry, the, the Ngu on the other hand, and to a point where I have not been, the Zigua, because now the Aki speaking people 
or the people with a key descent uh, who are in, in Handeni district, uh, either at Jungu or Muni Muni, or the neighboring villages uh, have lost their language. Mm. More of them speak Zigua. Now, mm, we want to see uh, if there are some of the remaining uh, uh, cultural materials which are presented in in a key language. How much is it that is remaining if it's uh, uh, some kind of language maintenance? And uh, uh, Krista Koenig had pointed uh, uh, somewhere that it appears like a key has remained a language for the, uh, for the cultural matters. And if it has remained a language for a region, do we want to say that a key is a, a, a cult language, a language used for some form of worship to their God, or is it changing fully? That is the kind of thinking that I want to look into. And for today, which I'll term as a preliminary kind of findings, I'm bringing today data from Ngababa village, which is located in uh, Simanjiro district. So Ngababa is a typical mixed village, but the lingua franca is Masa. The economic activities, the main economic activity uh, is animal keeping, but we also have the Gogo and the Bena and the Sukuma people have opened up maize farms and they cultivate maize and sell it in, in the northern parts of the country in Arusha and they go as far as Kenya. And the maize business is booming in Ngapapa. So we have a lot of uh, uh, influence or a lot of new uh, activities in the area. And Krista Koenig and, uh, have stated that it's a, a village where the custodians of Akia are available. And I would say, yes, they are there, but the impact of Maasai cannot be, it cannot be neglected. And uh, in Ngababa, I was able to meet a, a number of Akia people. So I still confirm that is uh, Sakia village. And I worked with one family for the, when I went in 2021. 20, 20, I was lucky to work with Ngoi Solo who had worked with Kasten Legel and his team. I was also uh, uh, lucky to work with Ngone Salon, a sister to Ngoi Solo. And one lady, Nameni, who was born in Gitu, raised in Olmoti, but she's married in uh, Ngababa. And she is a fluent speaker of uh, Aki. And to me, it looks like at some point, there are, is a community of Aki speakers who are still transmitting the language from the older generation to the newer generation. And Namen is this lady. And she's young and she speaks the language. So to me, if there are a young generation Aki speakers, it is likely that the language is still transmitted to newer generation because she's, she didn't attend school, but she has the ability to speak the language. And she's very conversant. And uh, uh, for the uh, registration sessions, registration sessions in Gababa, we will always turn it to her if we want to confirm uh, a, a given information. And uh, 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 Los Quito, which is named Gitu, the Akis themselves call it Los Quito. It appears to be a, the uh, indigenous village, a village where they had been there. And, but the population today had shrunk. It has remained very small. And to me, the village is a typical, a mixed village where you have the Aki speakers, the Ngu speakers, the Maasai speakers, the Zigua speakers. 
and with my interest with the Datoga, I could see that Toga families as well. But uh, Ngo is the lingua franca of the village, and it is predominantly Islamic. And my informants are telling me that it began in the 1960s, and it was formalized in 1974 as a new Jamaa village in Tanzania. And there are um, while Krista uh, Koenig and our team was saying there are about 46 speakers there. I, I think there are less. When I went there in, in September, there were less speakers. And I, would, I was able to count six uh, uh, key households near the uh, outskirts of uh, Gitu village. So the number of the speakers is shrinking, and it's shrinking very hard. And I worked with two speakers, Mganga, Mganga Ngewalie to the left, and Shawishi Ngewalie as well to the right. Mganga is stationed in Lospito, but Mze Shawishi lives in Olmot, but he visits uh, uh, Lospito regularly, and everybody knows him, and he knows many of the key speakers in, uh, in Lospito. Uh, children in Mganga's family do not speak the language. They speak in Gu. And I met a number of the uh, key speakers who worked with Krista uh, Koenig at Gituju. And during the conversations, they were speaking in Gu Maasai. They would switch Akie, Gu Maasai. And when they talked to me, they used Swahili. So they are, they are matlingo and they would switch between languages when they talk to one another. And, and I want to use this data to say, now this is the zone where Kiswahili and Ngu tend to send words into Aki. So I have mm, the first column is the data I obtained in Ngababa. The less the data is the result of the Ngababa are key speakers practicing animal keeping and the less of agriculture. The second list of words is from uh, Gitu village. And Gitu is more into agriculture and less into animal keeping, but animal keeping is there. So I'm trying to figure out which word comes from Maasai and which word comes from Gu. Mm, I, I'm tracking Sogam which I obtained only the word Lugugu, whose etymology I've not yet found. I'm still working on that. In both in Git, uh, Nigitu and in Gababa, maize or corn is called Ibae, Ibae, or Ipae, which I suggest is from Ma, Maasai word, Ilpae, it's likely. But the Maasai do not practice an, uh, crop cultivation. Uh, why would the Aki borrow from Maasai? But the list of the words are from Bantu. They are likely to be Bantu. For example, pumpkins, which is Mongoyande for one pumpkin. And the Mongo is likely to be Mungu, which is common in Bantu. And in, in Maasai, it is a, a Mongo a, which is likely to be also a loan from Bant, which is a loan from Bant, I would say. Ntumbatu is borrowed from Bantu. The Swahili one, Maharagi, Muhogo, Balasi, for peas and cassava and beans, those are obvious. And Martin Mouse and, uh, and Franz Rotland had said those are newer, newer inventions and they are from. Kiswahili for Tanzanian languages, but they have mm, 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 for potato. For potato, they have for the uh, king uh, in Gababa, which is in the Maasai village. They have Rigisoya, which to me is Nilo Salan. The Aki uh, in uh, Gitu, they have Mandoloisi, which is Prudo. The singular one is Mandaloy, which is the borrowing from Bantu, to the original Bantu term, Ndolo. For vegetables, they have 
Sega, Sega, which is in most band languages Sega, and for sugarcane, they have Giko YC, or in singular Giko in uh, in Kitu, and the Ngu people they have Ngua, and the Masai have Orgeba. I have the assumption that um, Giko YC comes from Ngua. I will make some observations later. Um, for the artifacts and house and house items, um, this is a typical zone for the Maasai now. Even though the, um, we have a number of uh, 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 key words for the households, but some are borrowed. And now I'm sticking to the, I'm comparing the Aki from Gabab and the Aki from Gitu. A stick, which is foreign to the Aki, is called Congoloisi in the, uh, Gababa, and it's called Engudi in Gitu, which is likely to be a loan from Maasai Engudi. Nyengo or slashing a tool. Nyengo, I can't get the proper name for Nyengo in English. It's called Hengoye in uh, Los Gito Aki, which is a loan from Hengo, from Gitu. Uh, for, for a door, it's Kurge, in both a, a Gitu and Gababa Kurge, which I assume is a, it's a loan from the Masai Kurgai. Pepesto, Muiko, is called Mtingoi in Gababa, which is a loan from Bantu. And uh, Lumerti, whose etymology I'm not very much sure. And I was also interested on the uh, Orgine, Orgine C, which is uh, the, the building poles. And this is a loan from Maasai. And Coloisie, which is a loan from Eloisie. And of course, we have the Swahili names for a few uh, mm, necklaces we, or, or ornaments which are used by the Maasai. Oh, but by the Aki, why do I say Maasai? I'm using the, I'm making a statement using the, uh, the uh, word Banglisi, uh, which is both Banglisi in Ngababa and Banglisi in, 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 in Gitu, and that stands for Bengals. I wanted to make the following observations now. That is all. Then I'll have references. Mm -hmm. The first observation is that the research that I was reading, particularly Casting Regel, the language endangerment in Tanzania is proposing of a pressure of the Maasai exerting on the, the Aki. That is possible only in the villages which are predominantly Maasai. There is a lot of pressure from Bantu speaking Zigua. I'm told, and a, a lot of pressure from the Ngu speaking uh, Bantu in uh, Gitu. Uh, another observation I want to make is that the Aki, both the Aki and the Maasai are new to crop cultivation because the Aki were foragers. The Maasai are pastoral. So it's likely that loans will come from Bantu, and this is confirmed. But for housing, they adopted the Maasai housing, although they have the traditional words for house and house uh, uh, equipment, but the structure is, is mass oriented. Loan words from Kiswahili, uh, which Ma Martin Mouse and uh, Franz Lothar are saying are um, for new borrowings. I think it's the same. I looked at crop names and they are, they are new. And the last thing I wanted to say is that I think I will go to Muni Muni or Jungu in 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 Handeni for two weeks, and that will help me uh, obtain further data on weather terms and the kingship terms, and the bin, and of course uh, more de terms on crops, and have uh, a better understanding of the society. For the time being, that is what I wanted to share. I want to show the title of the, I want to make a book of this nature.
some 120 or 150 uh, uh, pages of the Aki Society of Tanzania uh, as regards issues of um, contacts, language contact, language shift, language change, and Lex Koboroi. That is the target I'm thinking of in the next maybe three or four or five years. Mm, Asante San and Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much for your presentation. We can now begin the question and answer section. The question and answer section will be opened to voice questions as well as written questions. If you would like to ask a question, just raise your hand in the nonverbal controls present underneath the participant panel, and I will send you a request to unmute. If you prefer to ask a written question that is also still possible, you can do so using the Zoom chat module. And as usual, I will read out the question. Please remember that the webinars are recorded so that if you ask a question, this will be part of the recording and it will be released on the YouTube channel. Marta. Thank you, Armani. Uh, very interesting. Uh, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to that, to that book uh, that is, uh, that's going to come. Um, I find your uh, data on, on borrowing very interesting. And one thing that is really uh, I'm really wondering about is you have sometimes you have two different terms in the different mm -hmm. Aki uh, villages. So I very find it very useful that, that you make that distinction in where you collected the terms. But um, when you have the terms for the pestle, I think they are different in the in Gababa and in Gitu. Uh, did mm -hmm. you then ask the other ones uh, whether they know the other term? Do you know whether these these both terms exist in the villages with different meanings or or yeah how how can it be that in such a small language and well okay i guess they are far away in other villages but still that you have different words for uh, for these things no uh no, this the uh, the peso yeah was given to me by ngoi salanok and when you say young, younger ones in the Aki society, they have less, uh, less Aki. They will be speaking either Maasai or Ngu, if I talk of the villages where I have visited. So Mtingoi was mentioned to me by Ngone Salnok, who is an old uh, um, Aki speaker. I have not looked it uh, for the word to young Aki speakers. And the other one, Rumelti, was given to me by the Shawishi in Gitu. And the, the so I had to ask him, yeah, I asked Shawishi, do you know Mtingo? Because he's available in, uh, in Aki. And he said, no, no, he, he was not aware of Tingo. Thank you. The other word was the, was the potato, I think. Uh, I found it yeah. a very interesting word, was it not? Uh, the Dolo? With all sorts of morphology on it, and the other one was the igisolia, was it? The igisolia. Mm. Do you for that one? Do you have any any other information? Like, uh, do they know each other's words, or were there maybe different potatoes? Or no, I have not looked into that, and I didn't ask whether the speakers know the other word for igisolia. No. I, I didn't ask, yeah. So the task that will take it with me. Thank you. Michael. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mani, for your interesting presentation. Um, uh, I'm interested to hear a little bit about the methodology. Uh, start with, would like to know the way you prepare the, the lexicons that you were asking uh, the Akia speakers to give their equivalent. Uh, did you have a, an exact uh, exact number of lexicons that you you prepared, and you'd want to hear what they call them um, in Akie? And another one is uh, I think it is um, important to uh, mention that the the Maasai that you find in Sumanjiro are, are Kisongo uh, to be specific, or if you happen to uh, visit villages where you also find Parakuyo, it's, it's important to distinguish the two sections of the Maasai um, because there are some other uh, words that I cannot uh, personally 
um, use or even um, uh, recognize whether they are Maasai words. And that's why it's important to, you know, um, put it clearly that this is uh, Kisongo Maasai or Parakuyo Maasai. Um, I'm speaking as the Arusa and uh, we definitely have some uh, differences in vocabulary. Uh, but also given the examples you have on your slides, uh, I noted that um, uh, you, you, you use R instead of L for, let's say, uh, or Gibai. You know, it, it's good to identify whether they really pronounce as R or L. There's also another confusion uh, between G and K. So I see some words with G, uh, Ga. Um, and whereas we would use K instead of Ga. You also mentioned that there are a key speakers in Kilindi. I'm interested to know where exactly in Kilindi, uh, if one is interested to visit uh, the place in the future. And uh, maybe another word to add in terms of lexicon differences. You, 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 you gave an example of uh, pumpkin. There is a word for that um, in the Maasai column, Emo, the Mongoic. Uh, but, yeah. as, but for us, yeah, for us, uh, Arusa, we say Olmasidi for pumpkin, and it's a common word. And I also think that even other Maasai sections use the same word. And it, it, it's interesting to find the trend of uh, uh, morphologizing the borrowed words in, in Akia. You have the suffix isie, like Congolosie, Kuluisie, Bangilisie, interested to know the function of uh, this suffix. Yeah, you also mentioned that they, they are multilingual, these speakers are multilingual. Yes. Um, um, yeah, and you have the younger speaker uh, that you, you think is fluent in Akiek, but do you find um, you know, more instances where they mix the language, um, code mixing or code switching? or try to assess the level of uh, uh, fluency of comp or competence of a key language. Um, yeah, um, thank you. Thank you, Michael. The, the EC is, is a common a plural marker. Nouns will have EC as a plural marker. And it is uh, adopted for many of the borrowed words. It is also used in some of the indigenous words, but uh, available in most of the borrowed words. Otherwise, the change in vowel status is also very productive in the distinction between singular and plural in Akia. That is one. Two, the kind of Maasai that I deal with, as you know, it's, it's a weakness for me. Because now um, I have not been to Smanjira, I've been to Kiteto. And I'm wondering, Kiteto, what variety of Maasai is spoken in Kiteto? Must be Kisongo, actually. Ah, it's Kisongo. Ah, okay. And since the the Aki themselves speak uh, Maasai, so I'll uh, trace the Maasai word using the Aki themselves. So, so I cannot speak with authority on as regards the uh, status of the Maasai words which are used uh, by the Aki speakers. Mm, Kilindi, Kilindi is a newer district. It was split from Hande. And many Aki villages are available in Kilindi. So Kit, Gitu, where I went, is in Kilindi district. But previously it was in Hande. And the main township is Kibirash. Kibirash is the capital of the ward. Kijungu is the capital of the ward from Gababa. And Kijungu is also in it's partly in uh, Kilindi and partly in Kiteto. It's in the mid. Mm, uh, if you go to Mafisa, Mafisa Gangombe, you, you also find speakers. That is, uh, 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 this map is for Konig at R, uh, is from Konig, and I'm sorry that is it's, uh, it's not in full. So I went to Ngababa and Gitu. I had a student who was collecting names of plants for his master's dissertation and he went as far as Lolela, which is in Kilindi. So I'm planning to go to uh, Jungu, which is near Balanga. 
where I'm told there are a number of uh, Aki speakers as well. So we have a number of Aki speakers in the Bantu speaking areas, in the Zigua and uh, Gu speaking villages. Uh, on the competence and language attitude and influence, I didn't test it, you know, and checking for code switching and code mixing uh, without the capacity of using Ngu or Maasai, then that is a problem. When I was sitting with them uh, in Gituju, I heard a word endito while the Maasai were talking. So I had to ask that, I know that Endito is typically Maasai. Is it available even in Aki? And one of the speakers said, no, 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 that one, we also talk Maasai, at the same point we talk Ngu. So with the band words, I could easily recognize band words. But with between Aki, which is Nelotic, and Maasai, which is another Nelotic, that is a problem for me. Uh, oh, the last thing, the accession method, Michael, I have a list of crops which I checked for Hadza and even for some other band languages of Tanzania. When I was writing a, a paper on the penetration of Lexis, swide Lexis into band languages of Tanzania. So I have a list of crop names. And of course, for plant names, which I've not yet begun doing, uh, I have an a mechanism, a list like that I used for Adza and the Sukuma of plant names. So it's from this list that I, I can target that with a targeted search that if I look for this word, how do they say it in Akia? And how do they say it in, uh, in, in Ngu or any other uh, neighboring language? Say for a house, we will stand in before a house and they will ask, how do you call this? And this, and this, these building materials near house. And uh, I will obtain a list of words. For crops, I have a list of crops and they will check which crops are grown in the area and they give alternatives. For kingship, ter kingship terms, we ha I, had, I am uh, adopting a, a list available uh, given to me, it was shared to me, I think by Stefan Brook Brookhouse, or if it's not Stephanie, it is Alice Misha. So I also have a list of uh, kingship terms. So it is uh, a kind of uh, targeted or targeted uh, station, some kind of station which I'm targeting a uh, particular uh, lexical items. I think that is what I will say, Michael. Michael, do you have a follow up question? Yes. Um, uh, recently, the Maasai, I mean, the, the, the Maasai sections from other places um, in Arusha, now I'm talking about the Arusha speakers, have migrated to Simanjiro, Kiteto, Andeni, and Kilindi, looking for spacious land for cultivation. And now speaking about uh, um, crop cultivation for the Maasai, we are talking about the Arusha people because they have been doing that um, um, ever since, you know. Um, compared to Kisongo and Parakuyo, who have not yet really engaged in, in farming. So you will find that the, the loan words in Akie uh, may come from Arusa, because there are the people who are busy farming there. And that's why it is important to always um, uh, cross-check these words um, um, to make sure that you uh, uh, identify them in their respective dialects. And of course, I also, Hope that you'll be marking tone because in in in, in Maasai the tone has some um, you know functions that may inform uh, linguist. Yeah, so that's what I wanted to mention. Thank you. That that will be a very uh, big bottleneck for me as regards to tone, parallel length. I will struggle a lot, Michael. I know the uh, contribution of that to proper. Uh, documentation but yeah yeah i will struggle yes for well, sure i mean if you have recordings there's no problem you'll always go back to them or share with yeah, some yeah, okay, other okay. people yeah. Yeah, I have, yeah i have recordings for the individual words yeah sometimes you may test them in in, in sentences and in, in connected speech to see uh, whether any tone change Ilaria. yes uh, thank you, Amani, for this uh, wonderful presentation. 
And I don't know if you know that I'm, I'm, I've been working very much on the Ogek of Maria Shon in Kenya. And uh, uh, now what you have uh, uh, shown now is very interesting also for me because I can confirm that some of the words that you have listed are present also in the Ogiek of Maria Shoni. And uh, what is interesting also is that uh, this uh, um, um, plural form, I mean, this, this morpheme for the plural uh, CA is productive also in the Ogiek of Maria Shoni and it is uh, the most productive form. So I confirm that uh, it is, uh, uh, okay, uh, the same in the two languages. Um, and then, okay, I don't have uh, much words, uh, many words for, for crops or for uh, 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 handles and so on in, in, uh, in the Ogiek of Maria Shoni because uh, there they are still uh, really foragers, so they do not uh, have uh, crops. Uh, but I confirm that uh, they use the same uh, word uh, for beans, for example, while they have a completely different word for peas, uh, etc. I, I did not uh, get all the words, but uh, anyway, some some uh, some interesting uh, reminds are are, um, uh, are there. So thank you very much. Thank you. But but now we are wondering when did the uh, Akie cut off from the Ogiek. In the, in the literature, we are wondering of that because they are not in contact. Yeah, they are not in contact. I've worked also a lot with Cast and uh, we have just, uh, we come from uh, this, uh, uh, we have just written a, a paper together and uh, uh, really we do not, we do not have any any idea and also when you speak with the Ogiek in Maria Shoni they do not even know that there are Akie in Tanzania who could be their, their neighbors or their friends and when I mm, tell them that okay there are the Akie in Tanzania and they have a language which is uh, quite uh, similar to yours they really do not believe <laughs> so it's uh, it's very interesting however the two languages, if you compare the grammars, you no, know, uh, I have also published the grammar of the Ogiek uh, language, and Martin Maus was the reviewer for this. And uh, you will see that uh, the languages are clearly uh, related to one another, uh, to, to each other. So um, basically, it could be some hundreds here, but how, how many hundreds, I don't know really. 500s, 400s, and then no. On, on, on this issue, I mean, since there's also the movement of the... Of the, the Maasai. I always wondered, is there any indication that they went together? Do you have any, any, any uh, information on that or any suggestion, any, any hint? I just have these uh, linguistic hints because uh, they do not, at least in Maria Shoni, they do not remember uh, to have been in touch with those in Tanzania, so they, they even do not know that there are people in Tanzania speaking a language close to them. So it's it's really hard starting from yeah, there. I, I had the really. same experience. I never, I I I, I spent a few hours among the Akiak in uh, where was it Kitwai, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted to go to the Asak, but uh, the Maasai, they only know the robo, so they, they, they sent me to the wrong the robo. <laughs> and, and so after, after, when I was really sure that, that this was uh, the nilotic one, then I, then I left again. But they, they too, they had no memory at all. Um, but I think very often with these hunter-gatherer groups, they're, they're, they're not great on, 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 on memory of history. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be their thing, but yeah. the Maasai are. So I, I, I wondered whether the uh, what history is of the of the Maasai spread into the Maasai plains into Tanzania. I don't know whether anybody, whether Michael knows or or what what their history is. How long how long ago did they get into yeah. into this area? Because I think that is not that long ago, I think, for the Maasai, it must have been maybe beginning of the 19th century, something like that. That's my guess. For the settlement of the Maasai, 
Yeah. I'm not very much sure. Mm. But it, uh, I'm looking, what kind of article is that, Ilaria, that, that you're publishing with Kristen? But it's about uh, the situation, this, the social linguistic situation in the two areas and the possibility of uh, engaging in, uh, in uh, revitalization projects with cooperation. And it will be published in Testi e Linguaggi, uh, that is a re an Italian review. And then uh, if you want, I can send you the... the I, I no. think it would be really interesting to do a, a, yeah. a detailed comparison between the Akiak and the Okiak. Yeah. It, and since we have yeah. people now working in both places, it could be yeah, enriched uh, from, from the comparison. You could ask, do you know this word, that word? Yeah. That would be real nice. Amalia would be a, a nice part to your book too, because it gives you, yeah. you can show that some of the of the influence of the words in the Akiak is different from the Okiak. But the, the yeah. book, where is it published? Uh, you can find it online. I can uh, send you the, the link now. I would put it in the, in the chat just a moment. It is open access and it, is, it has been published by my university should see it in the chat. But, but also we have the sing, uh, the Yanda, the, the, the singular marker, which is available in, in the Toga, which I could see in some of the words in, in Akie, which is also, uh, it's in the line of thinking that, uh, uh, yeah, it's Mongo Yande, Mongo Yande. The Yande is a singular marker, which is likely to be similar to uh, Nyenda, in, in Yenda or Nyenda in, in the talk, which for me it will be a nativization process in which you borrow a band word and assign it to the band speak, uh, 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 the structure of the nouns in, in, in Akia. If there are no additional questions for our speaker, I would like to thank our speaker once more. I'd also like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all of the presentations in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found on the Rift Valley Network YouTube page and entries for each presentation are added to the Rift Valley bibliography. I would like to thank Amani again for his presentation and everyone else for participating today and I hope to see you again at our next webinar.